So my name is Anamika and I'm going to be hosting the session today. Um, so let's start with uh, how Ashish starts all his sessions. The highest in me bows to the highest in you and may be, this be the happiest day of your life. So welcome to everybody. Uh, for those who are new to uh, Mindful Living, this is a community of like-minded people who are looking to have uh, inputs, tools, techniques, um, suggestions on how to have a conscious and mindful living. So this is the brainchild of uh, Ashish Kumar who has founded this community and who continues to nurture it. We have sessions every Saturday on some topic or the other, be it on yoga, be it on breath work. Um, we've uh, done sessions on conscious parenting, on uh, the works of Kabir, uh, on the energy system, the chakra balancing. We've done several book uh, reviews, book readings, and today is one such day. Uh, so, uh, Dhairya Gupta will be presenting. I will give you an introduction to him in some time. Uh, during the presentation that he makes, if you have any questions, you can please put the question in the chat box. I will be monitoring the chat box. And once he finishes the presentation, we will present those questions to him. If you want to ask questions yourself, you can just put up your hand. I think everybody knows there is this reactions button right at the bottom of your um, uh, screen. And if you click on that, there is a uh, icon to raise your hand. So that is how we will do the session for today. So let me uh, present to you Dharya Gupta, who's going to be uh, doing a book review of uh, the book, uh, The Almanac of Naval Ravika. So Dairya is a serial entrepreneur whose first startup was All His Health. It got acquired and is now running uh, Earthrite, which is an electric, and now he is running an, uh, running an electric mobility company called Earthrite. It is a bootstrap startup, which grew 1000% within the first two years of its operation and soon turned operationally profitable. Congratulations to you, Dairya. Thera is an avid reader and his favorite books are Bhagavad Gita, this book called Freakonomics, Atomic Habits, uh, of course, Almanac of Naval Ravikant, among others. He's also a fitness freak. On weekends, you can catch him riding the motorcycle both on and off the road. Uh, whoever thought that a biker can be interested in reading anything other than an auto magazine. So Dharya Gupta is an electrical engineer from Delhi College of Engineering and an MBA from the Babson College in USA. And he has more than 18 years of experience in startups, consulting, automobile industry, metals and mining, real estate and FMCG industry. He's also the recipient of the Rising Star Award from his alma mater, the Babson College in Boston, USA. He has more than 10 years of auto journalism experience under his wings with portals such as Motoroids, which is India's leading auto portal for automobile related news and reviews. So what Dharia is going to do for us today is review this book called The Almanac of Naval Ravi Khan. It's a book uh, in short that compiles the wisdom and experience of this gentleman called Naval Ravi Khan, who's a successful entrepreneur and he teaches people how to build wealth and how to achieve long-term happiness. And he's given some few essential skills. So um, the book basically is a collection of novels, different interviews and reflections. And it gives us this uh, insight into these two things that we all look for, right? Wealth and happiness. So with that, I hand it over to Dairia to make his presentation. And uh, so, Daira, that's okay, right? After you make your presentation, yes. we'll have a question-answer session. Uh, so before that, um, just a couple of uh, two uh, announcements that those who are new to the community, Anam is going to be putting it on the chat, how you can join the WhatsApp group where we have the announcements of all that's happening in the community and all the different events that are, ha are happening. So you can please join that 
WhatsApp community. And also, Anam, please put in the uh, link for the YouTube channel. So the YouTube channel has uh, all the recordings of the earlier uh, sessions in case you want to uh, access them. Great. So, Dharia, over to you. Thanks a lot, Dynamika, for the wonderful introduction. I don't know if I'm deserving of that, but thanks a lot. So, uh, hi everyone. Thank you all for joining in. Uh, and uh, I've been part of Mindful Living community for a while, and all the sessions that I've attended are wonderful. So, uh, I believe that, uh, you know, I was talking to Ashish. I've known Ashish from uh, my first venture. Uh, I interacted with him back uh, in my first venture, and we stayed in touch. So uh, I realized this is a wonderful community and a book like this is perfect uh, for a community like <laughs> Mindful Living because that is what sorry, this book talks about, but in a different way. So first of all, I would like to ask everyone, uh, have you guys, which all you guys have heard about Tamil Ravi Khan? So either, uh, you, either you can raise your hand via the app here or type it in the chat box. Yes, if you've heard of Tamil Ravi Khan. So we'll have an idea if people know about him. So uh, those who know, uh, great. But if you don't, you should follow him on Twitter uh, and other platforms, and you should listen to his podcast. So Naval Ravi Kanth, he is a typical Gen Xer. Uh, he was born in 1974 in Delhi, but he moved to Kunes in New York uh, at the age of nine. He had a tough uh, upbringing. Uh, he talks a lot uh, about it uh, in the book. Uh, first of all, the book is actually a collection of all his podcasts about his tweets, about uh, general interviews with the person. So it's not like a biography per se, but it's a collection of his thoughts and everything uh, from different sources. So uh, we get to know about uh, Navel Ravi Kant in the book itself. Uh, and he talks about that he grew up poor, and for him, uh, survival money was very important, and he had to do two jobs just to make enough money to survive. But he came at a stage where, uh, you know, uh, he was investing in startups, you know, uh, hundreds of thousand dollars to millions of dollars into startups. So he came from here to here. But uh, that is why he, he is a perfect person to talk both about building wealth and about happiness, because he talks about that even if you take away all my money today, I still have my skills and I can still make all this money back very quickly. I won't be unhappy. So, uh, needless to say, he is very smart. Uh, he grew up poor, but he did it. Computer science economics uh, graduation from Dartmouth. And he started many companies, failed in a few, but some became very successful. And there are very few people, uh, you know, who understand all these three things in a very good manner. So I've already said, uh, so this book is actually a collection of his wisdom uh, through various podcasts, tweets, interviews, transcripts from a lot of resources. And they've been put together uh, by Tim Ferriss. Oh, sorry, uh, it, they put together by Eric uh, Hoganson, who is actually technically the writer of the book. And uh, so it's a book which is not like, a doesn't read like a biography, doesn't read like, you read a book like Freakonomics, uh, which is, you know, talks about concept in a very deep level. So it's a very different book to read, but it's a lot of fun. Uh, it's a very easy read if someone tries to pick it up. So when we talk about wealth, okay, before you go there, uh, wealth and happiness, who here thinks that wealth, <laughs> sorry, who here thinks that you have to give up happiness and comfort in life to build wealth? Or once you have wealth, you do not have happiness in your life. Or who thinks that, you know, that wealth and happiness cannot coexist. If you think so, uh, please your hand, you know, or you type yes. But if you think that they coexist, you know, uh, there cannot be happiness without wealth and there cannot be uh, wealth without happiness, then say uh, both, you know. So uh, let's see that what is idea that people have wealth and happiness. Because what we see these days, uh, I follow a lot of podcasts. I see a lot of YouTube videos uh, about that, about uh, self-improvement. What I see a lot of these people like Gary Vaynerchuk and things, and people like him, they're about hustle, 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 and you know, 
leave everything don't talk to your family you know don't go to any family uh, functions uh, don't have any uh, any fun in your life and just work 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 uh, if you want to be successful uh, but uh, so uh, that is not uh, you know that is the kind of a myth this uh, book breaks right uh, he uh, he when he talks about wealth we'll not go over there so he says the first thing that he says is that making money is not a thing you do it's a skill you learn right uh, people think that uh, making money is okay let me get a uh, you know uh, a pay package uh, you know of, of this much uh, people think they uh, i'll join iams i'll uh, go and work with the fmcg company as a brand manager and give this much pay and that is how you make money uh, but he insists that uh, it's a skill that you learn you learn a skill and uh, even if you make small amount of money in the beginning but you keep on improving your skill you uh, start taking more money making more money so it's like uh, making money is not the end goal but developing that skill of making money is uh, and the second part he talks about is uh, a lot of lawyers and doctors will not feel happy about it uh, you'll never uh, are going to get rich renting out your time right <laughs> Sorry, uh, sorry, having a little bit of cough. He says that uh, yes, lawyers and uh, doctors are very smart people. He gives a specific example of that because we all assume they are very rich. But he says that if you want to become very wealthy, right? Like you can sit at home and you can invest your money, you have enough money that it gives you enough rich. Uh, you cannot do that uh, unless you invest in equities. uh because renting out your time how much can you charge for an hour of your work right if you are not the best doctor in the world or the best lawyer in the world you can just spend 1000 dollars a you know an hour maybe but at the same time how many people can afford that right so if you see the forbes 100 list uh i know this is the inclusion i got it's not in the book uh if you see the list of the top uh, fortune uh, 100 people uh like forbes list of top 100 people that are just people none of them are says that okay i am a lawyer that's why i am the top 100 it's just people even if india you see they're mostly businessmen and entrepreneurs very rarely you will see uh, someone who has made their money by giving in their hours and the third thing he says earn with your mind not your time right uh, we all feel that you know okay today i'm making let's say 1000 uh, rupees per day and then i'll make 10000 rupees per day but then again uh, we are thinking then you also see that uh, in our job what we see is that uh, as the uh, salaries increase as the packages increase as income increases the amount of time that they give to the company to work there also increases right uh, when you are at a junior position in a company uh, you work for 8 hours you uh, clock out at 6 and you get your salary nobody asks any question but right but when you uh, become a senior manager in the same company and you just go up the ladder uh, it's really that you'll be leaving at 6 right uh, because still somewhere you are making uh, money through time and that is why most people are still unhappy although they get that promotion get that pay package they always wanted so it's about you know that and especially in these modern times on with your mind not your time because if you look at it Uh, all the solutions that we use, like the Zoom uh, product that we are using, right? Uh, are we paying Zoom uh, for the amount of time which went to the development of this uh, product? No, we are giving money to them for the uh, solution that they have, right? So it is like initially they might have to might have to put in thousand hours of work, so ten thousand hours of work in total to develop the basic app. Uh, and uh, the first order they made and they be like okay that's a very less money uh, but then over the times uh, they don't have to now put in extra hours uh, he gives a very lot of examples of software that how software help you make a lot of money uh, so then what happens because your incremental cost is less right solving a problem the second part of uh, making wealth is judgment he mentions a lot of places uh, the example of one of the richest people in the world uh sorry for the name of that investor uh you know who is known as the biggest investor in coca cola uh anyways so i'm just slipping from my mind right so that person he doesn't uh, he reads a lot of books he is not working 13 hours a day you know looking at his portfolio etc he just takes two or three decisions in fact even jeff bezos 
uh, has said this in an interview is like my the most important work is the one when i make a decision he's like i i just have to make one or two decisions a week and that's a huge impact uh, on the company right it's not the number of hours that's sitting on his desk and you know looking at the reports and dashboards that's not how he makes was uh, amazon right so the, re, the you make a decision only when you're very good at judgment right uh, so he talks a lot about uh, building a good judgment and uh, so uh, and the second part he talks about is shed your i need to see reality right <laughs> what often happens is uh, when we live in a world which is not everything is about positive everything is about uh, you know uh, only uh, focusing on the good things in you and uh, on, the, uh, on things around you but sometimes you shift that identity right somebody might come to you and say you are the best expert in uh, uh, come to me and uh, say that okay you are the best person i know in electric mobility and if i take that identity and uh, hold it as true uh, then uh, i might not grow right uh, talking personally i might not grow because i think okay i know everything uh, but it would be best to see their reality and see okay if, if i know this much there's a lot I, that i don't know right so uh, do not be get uh, focused on my ident on your identity and see the reality uh, that's why we see a lot of these uh, professions which were amazing uh, till a few years ago they were a lot of making a lot of money uh, till a few years ago in a profession but today uh, you know uh, those professions are not the highest paid right so in that case uh, because there are some of the people they get up with that identity and they don't see the reality that the reality is that that uh, job or that uh, uh, that skill is not the highest paid today so can they change their identity can they improve their skills uh, and uh, i've covered this part that there's no permanent solutions in a dynamic system right like we live in a far more dynamic world than we have ever done i think our generation has seen the having one landline uh, phone in the house uh, are you know uh, older than me people have seen like one uh, phone in the in that entire colony and now we have come to a place when one person has two numbers right one is personal and one is official uh, so we have seen that transition very quickly within a span of about like 40 years which is a lot of time right so we are seeing a lot of very quickly like uh, uh, changing world right so it's it's that is why you be you need to be very good with judgment to see okay is the time over for this solution right <laughs> then he talks about happiness so he says that happiness make and making money are not very different so he says that happiness love and passion they aren't things that you find uh they're the choices you make right we might say a lot of people attach their happiness that if I have a bank balance this much, and my account will be a crore rupees, I will be happy. I will be happy. After that, I will return my return. But what happens is, if you really choose, if you see your situation today, you can definitely find uh, things uh, which are good to feel happy. You know, you can look around you and feel that hey, I have a uh, you know roof over my head, I have food at my uh, on my table. Uh, it might not be the most best organic avocado from the you know hills of South America, but uh, at least it's good food, right? And you sleep uh, with your stomach uh, full, and your kids go to good schools, so you can feel happiness, even if it's not that, right? Like there might be something, and always choose happiness at every stage of your life. <laughs> and similarly, love and passion. Uh, sorry right uh like i'm very passionate about motorcycles right uh that's a choice that i've made right like it's uh i make sure and it's a lot of effort also uh, to follow hobby and to follow passion but the amount of happiness that you get is a choice that you make that the pain of getting up at five in the morning and passionate about working or the pain of waking up every day at 5 30 in the morning and going to the gym while there might be a momentary of unhappiness of waking up early and getting ready but the happiness that you get uh, after that is a lot more right so it's a choice that you make uh, and one of the best lines that i read in this book was this peace is happiness at rest and happiness is peace in motion right like i want everyone to just think about this 
line for a few seconds. Peace is happiness at rest and happiness is peace in motion. Right, you find peace when uh, it, it's when you're at rest and you're happy, that is peace, right? Nothing is happening, nothing great is happening around you, but you're just resting and you're happy, that is peace, right? You're at peace with yourself. And happiness is peace in motion. Your emotion, you're doing, you know, you're working towards your goal, working hard. And by the way, when he talks about, you know, building wealth, I know we have talked about that, you know, don't exchange your time for money. But it, that doesn't mean that you don't work hard. You have to put in that time to work hard, right, to make wealth. But it's not like that, okay, I'm charging $100 today, I'll start charging $200 tomorrow, right? He says that how can you go from $100 to uh, $5,000 using your mind? You know? So uh that's what he talks about so it's not he talks a lot about that hard work is essential uh so uh motion motion when he talks about is when you're working towards your goal and you're moving in in, in you know not in the literal sense but so you're happy right uh you're at peace you have problems around you right <laughs> no business no matter how good it is how big it is how much funding it has it has issues right so when you're working towards your goal and you know, you're still happy. So I'll move quickly. And uh, be an authentic you. What has happened uh, these days is we try to emulate people, right? We say that that person is India as Elon Musk. That <laughs> person <laughs> is India <laughs> Bill Gates. Right? So, uh, he says that every single... Uh, just, just, just a minute. Sorry. Rashmi, can you please <laughs> mute yourself? I can mute. I think I have... I can mute that. Yeah. So, uh, you know, that is something we should all think about. We always try to emulate people. Uh, we can always idolize people. We can look always look up to people. We can learn from them. But do not try to emulate everything in them. He says that every human being is absolutely unique. Right. Uh, so uh, find yourself your authentic you. Right. You might see the best things of your most ideal person. They might have some flaws. Right. Uh, there might be something which is not suited to your personality. So be an authentic you. <laughs> so if wisdom could be parted through words alone, again, very ironic. We are giving this presentation, but if wisdom could be and uh, through this book, if wisdom could be parted through words alone, we'd. Uh, We'd call be done here, right? We'd all be, sorry, we'd all be done here. Uh, so uh, ironically, like uh, the philosophy is, uh, philosophy is just not about words, right? Philosophy. Uh, so how am I implementing in this my life, right? So since so this is the mind of mindful living community, so I think uh, I draw from it that uh, I'm trying to focus uh, more on my actions than outcomes, right? Uh, as an entrepreneur, we always have these goals that, uh, okay, I need to earn this much of revenue. I should have these many number of clients. I should have all of that. But what happens is everything, all those things are result of your actions. So rather than saying that I need 20 clients or I need to go from, you know, X number of vehicles to 10 X number of vehicles, I should say, okay, what do I need to do? Increase, uh, increase clients. How do I get clients by calling people, by emailing people, by finding out who needs my product, right? So I'm not taking action that every day I have to contact two new prospects, right? So focus on action rather than the outcomes. Outcome will come. Tomorrow or day after tomorrow, the outcome will come. Just focus on the actions. Uh, and I have started to increase the time that I read every day. Uh, social media doesn't help, but I'm trying to switch off social media in the night and read. <laughs> and I think we all of us, we go through FOMO, right? Especially when you're an entrepreneur and you see all these funding news and everybody keeps sending me, are ke electric mobility ki startup ko itna boom hai, uh, funding mili hai. You do get FOMO. Right, and it is hard, right? Uh, and I also am very attached. Uh, so actually, I was supposed to go on a motorcycle trip today and was calculating I'll be in that place by one in the afternoon and I'll, I'll do this call. 
then i dropped that right and i'm i felt very bad initially then i went to the gym and you know i calm myself down and i'm going to hear it from my friends for canceling on them but uh, that is as i'm saying i'm very attached to this identity for biker traveler right if i miss the gym i feel very bad even if i had a bad sleep and for my own health purpose i miss the gym i feel bad so i think it's very important that to be at peace uh looking at the reality around me and not be attached to the identity i think that's just something uh, I, i i face a challenge with and uh, we are all humans and i would like to thank mindful living community and in conclusion i'll all say i'll only thing i'll say is that you know uh, we should also all be very mindful of what we need you know we should all create our very unique identity if it takes sitting down for a few hours nothing you know around us no phones no laptop maybe just a piece of paper maybe not even that just sit have a cup of coffee if you like that uh, or just sit uh, by yourself and decide okay what is that i want in my life do i right and do a very mindful uh, way of doing it if you're ready to again it's a very personal uh, way of me seeing uh, what mindfulness is uh and it draws a lot from this book that uh, sit down quietly uh, and i think everyone should do that uh, this book also writes about it a lot of people say that every week you should have at least an hour every week not in one go maybe 10 minutes every day something like that every day you, you do nothing right you are not trying to do anything just sit with your thoughts so uh, then you actually really start to realize what you want from the inside right then your uh, brain will itself tell you that listen bro you know you love money way too much right like you love success way too much and you're ready to sacrifice your family time your time with friends everything to make as much money as you can if that is what your mind tells you i think one should follow that uh, if your mind tells you listen you have a great life just keep improving just keep doing these things so keep improving little bit little bit but you'll be happier happy is that way right uh, do that and uh, so i think it's it's very important for us all to just sit with us and realize what we really want from our life and not worry about what the society tells us you know and i'm more than happy to talk to people you know this is my email id this is my phone number just drop me a, a whatsapp i would love to engage with conversation with anyone thank you thank you dhairi i think this was very important uh, this uh, as you said being in silence right that is how uh, practices like vipassana are so beneficial to people we never really pause and right. look within ourselves <laughs> or i i can always say dhairi is like this and ashish is like that but how am i we never pause to think that and it's very important to yeah spend this time in silence so uh, yeah when you said one hour first i thought you were saying one hour per day and i said oh god that's going to be a tough one yeah, yeah. <laughs> so i do that i i actually have a timer okay and for i started with 5 minutes now i've come to 10 minutes in about 6 uh, months time where i just sit doing nothing and when we say doing nothing as uh, dhairya said be with just be, be with your thoughts or just focus on your breath uh don't read don't listen to music nothing uh it's nothing you basically you, you better close your eyes because the eyes are a great source of uh, distraction so that was great and there i like the three main takeaways from that you have given us that uh, you know uh fomo so there is you know there is another term nowadays which is called jomo which is joy wow. of missing out yeah so right can actually okay. have the joy of missing out but you're right uh, of fomo is a big issue with a lot of people what am i missing out while i'm doing this so as you rightly you gave a very apt example of uh, you wanting to go elsewhere and making that choice which is uh, also what comes from the first point that you try more focus on the actions rather than results right so even in the Uh, bhagavad gita it is there right the prasad yeah. buddhi that you accept whatever it is there you make all your efforts you have to give your best yeah. there is no escaping that 
and then you accept whatever it is that you get to get that peace of mind to get happiness like we never say no to prasad right so any right. outcome of our work has to be treated as prasad right. uh, the third point you made i'm a little intrigued uh, you said you increase the time that you read every day so um, tell us a little bit more about it dhairya how does it help you what sort of books do you read uh, how often do you read and uh, a little bit more about that so right now i am reading sapiens okay and are you uh, reading the um, illustrated version no 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 Achha. i'm reading okay. The, uh, okay. the yeah so uh, it's a very very interesting book uh right. you know and i'm a slow reader i'm not a very fast reader mm -hmm. because whenever i read a book i try to implement it uh and then see i i see in perspective the things especially okay. when i read books related to economics uh or uh or finance uh, or like atomic habits i am also thinking of how can implement that in my life sometimes i take mm -hmm. notes so i'm a slow reader Uh, because rather than uh, reading fast and finishing a book my aim is to actually learn from it and see how much i can implement in my life to make it better yeah. uh and uh, at the same time sometimes you have to reject an idea i think a lot of times uh, some people make a mistake is they read something in a book and they do not challenge that one mm -hmm. right i believe that even if the book is by a favorite author and you think about uh, their, uh, their their thought process you can disagree with them right Yes. I think that is very important that you don't have to agree with the author every time. Okay. So having kind of that kind of a judgment so that's why I'm a slow reader. I generally read at night. Right? Okay. So uh, and uh I generally after you, like by author. after you finish the work for the day. <clears throat> yes. Uh, I I find it very hard to work late. Uh it's been right. my my very personal thing to me. I used to wake uh, when I was preparing amazing entrance I used to wake up at 4 in the morning. Okay. Uh, in school uh, so i've always you know been a early riser and get my work done as soon as possible and it's just that your mind is so tired that by the time you used to come back from coaching back in school correct uh, like i didn't have enough energy to study so i'll study the next day so same thing has continued so that habits i've not been able to change uh, so that's why since okay. i start very early in the morning and i'm Super. at it I, i don't work late at night so that is when i read the book Yeah, I do not like read my like calls. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. But, yeah, so, uh, yeah. And uh, the th second thing about uh, reading uh, is uh, read the books that you like. Right. Okay. I did pick up a book. I like the philosophy of Friedrich Nietzsche, mm -hmm. and uh, I picked up his book. Uh, so, uh, so uh, so spoke uh, Zaruhastra. That spoke Zaruhastra. Hmm. right uh, so it's a very philosophical book and uh, i'm reading it parallelly but very difficult to uh, very difficult to actually uh, you know read quickly it's a very deep book but it's very interesting suresh agarwal ji you need to mute yourself uh yeah so there have been like comments coming in uh, that sapien rocks i think many people Uh, have uh, connected with that right. book sapiens and for those who haven't read it maybe that's a suggestion from dhairya as well as me and uh, current, Buffett, yeah. currently there's also a, a illustrated version of sapiens which is also very good so mm -hmm. uh, this i've actually now started reading some of these illustrated books i also read persepolis uh, they are very right. uh, very uh, a very unique books right <clears throat> we usually mm -hmm. don't uh, associate uh, illustrations with adult books but these are really right. adult illustrations and uh, very nice great so that you can so suresh uh, made a very good point does it mean don't get carried away with appreciation uh, -huh. uh so yes. you know it's a suresh it's a very good question i think uh, we have to find a balance between uh, self love and uh, becoming uh, a narcissist so to say yes. so for example uh, i always felt like okay so my parents uh, my grandfather my father i come from that background that you know fortunately that they have all both, both are engineers and come had were very good in school right so when they you get genes like that uh, so they expect you to go to the best school you know 
So, so uh, go to the best engineering college was not like a, that was like, how can you not go there, right? So that is why I've never received a lot of appreciation whenever my uh, dad's, uh, dad's friends come related to him, he was like, huh, so what's the big deal, right? Like he had everything, he went to the best coaching. So what's the big deal if he got there, right? So uh, I was never like, uh, you know, I was never celebrated that way. It was like said that success should, I mean, it's a natural thing to come, right? So, uh, but then I realized that uh, one also needs self-love. We need to celebrate our successes, but not to an extent that we get carried away with them. So, so it's a great question. I think we have to find a balance. We yeah. have to appreciate ourselves first, but not let it become narcissism that we stop improving ourselves. Yeah. Right. So, so how do you find the balance is the, is the key. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Arun. So Daria, you can, uh, I think, stop uh, sharing your screen. Maybe yeah. you can be in uh, focus. While, <laughs> and before we take any more questions, um, Anam is going to be putting uh, the feedback form link on the group chat box. Please take the time to fill the feedback before you leave the meeting. And for those who uh, came in late, we will also be uh, sharing the WhatsApp link to join the community if you are new to the community, as well as the YouTube link where you will find the videos of all our past uh, talks. We have these talks every Saturday and uh, for different occasions as well. So uh, please do fill. Just let's take a minute, uh, Dharia, for people to fill up the, um, the feedback sure. form. Uh, because if some people are in a hurry, they can leave. The others, please stay back and we will continue with the question answer session with Aria. Detachment is a good tool to happiness. Yeah, so Aria, we just take a I pause. Think. We just take a pause for half a minute for them to fill the sure. uh, feedback form, and then we'll take this uh, question by uh, Sandeep Jain. If you fill the feedback form, just do a D for done in the chat box so that we know it's done. And once people, thank you. Thank you, thank you Vasudha. Thank you, Sunil. Wait, Arun, and Tom. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. So then you can stay back if you want for uh, another 10 minutes. We will do a question answer session. But yes, if you have to be elsewhere, thank you for attending. Okay, Dharia, so are you there? We'll wait for the area to come back. And for those who are not yet part of our WhatsApp community, the link is on the chat box. Please join the group. And the YouTube link is also being shared for you to access all the talks that we've had. While we wait for Dharia to join, all the others, please fill the feedback form. And if you have any questions, you can put them in the chat box or uh, put up your hand and once Dharia is back, he will take the calls. And America, you're on mute, is it? 
No, you can't hear me. Okay, the idea you can take the next question. Daria, can I ask the question? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Daria, if I have to ask you, what is more important, uh, the happiness or the wealth? If you want a choice to select one and why so? Did you get my question? Daria, have you been able to hear uh, Mr. Arun's question? I think it's... Uh... Namika ji, thank you very much. Uh, I just joined. Uh, today is my second session. Okay, and nice. I'm thankful to you and would like to be a part of it. Sure. And, um, it would be my pleasure to be a part of it. Okay, great, great. How did you how how did you hear about us? I don't know. I somehow two weeks back I came to know about it. Achha. And I did contact Achha. Ruchi. Ruchi. Some message was there from her. Ruchi. And then, yeah. Then last time I was I did attend one okay. Uh, okay. session. And after okay. that I got a session. Thank you. Very much. I Okay, Dhaira, are you back? Uh, yes. Uh, ah, actually, yeah. the speaker had a problem, I think. Yeah, yeah. So, Arunji, can you repeat your question for Dhaira? Yeah, Dhaira, first of all, thank you to you and Anamika for a wonderful uh, presentation. And uh, my question to you is, given a choice between wealth and happiness, what would you choose uh, if there's only one choice and why so? Uh, I'll choose uh, happiness. Yeah. Because uh, if I'm happy, uh, given my the skill that I have, no one can uh, take away that. I think I can build back my wealth. Yeah, that was happy. Yeah. And you'd like to elaborate on that? Yeah. So uh, the thing is, no one can really define wealth, right? I'm way wealthier than what I was uh, probably 15 years ago. But I feel I'm not wealthy enough because sometimes I compare myself to my friends who are far more successful. So uh, no matter how much amount of wealth you get, uh, you'll always find a reason not to be happy if you focus only on wealth. But if you focus on happiness and you say that, okay, what do I need to be happy? You know, you can always uh, find happiness and choose to be happy. And then you can work towards wealth, right? All it takes is your skill and some time. And I mean, if you really focus on it, you can. So, but wealth will not ensure happiness, right? Uh, that uh, we have seen so many times that we have seen some really miserable people uh, who are very, very wealthy, right? Really wealthy people who commit suicide, who are in deep depression. So, but I've never seen, a, I've seen a lot of happy people without any wealth, but I've also seen a lot of, happy people with wealth so i'll always choose happiness without that okay thank you very much we are on the thank same thanks a lot about. Uh, we are on the same wavelength yeah. <laughs> thank you thank you so the idea you can take now sandeep jen's question on uh not questions more of an observation of detachment is a good tool uh, uh for happiness yeah i mean uh, that it truly is right like no matter how detached I want to feel from a lot of things, I'm still attached to a lot of things, right? And uh, what happens is, what do you uh, choose to attach yourself with? Uh, if we attach ourselves too much with the uh, material goods around us, uh, I mean, then uh, that's, do not attach happiness to it, right? Momentary happiness, yes, of course. The moment I bought my new motorcycle, I was very happy. 
but uh, I should not become unhappy that, okay, if it's just taken away from me. I didn't have it. I was happy when I didn't have it. So if I am unhappy, uh, when I, it's taken away from me, right? So nothing else has changed. So yes, detachment is a good tool, definitely. It's not easy. <laughs> it's easier said than done. But yes, the more we detach ourselves with our identity, especially, it's, it's a great tool for happiness for sure. Yeah, that's true. Great. Any other questions for Dairia? Okay, so there's one that's come uh, that should, as a parent, we celebrate all our kids' achievements or take it for granted. Very interesting. So you can say a parent, my, so I have a niece, uh, she got 97.4% in her class 10th exams this year. And she was second in the district of the school. And we were all very, very happy. Right. And obviously we celebrated her achievement, but it was not like throwing a big party. Right. My my parents, like her grandparents and her parents, they definitely patted her back. Her uh, photo was put on a, you know, on a, on a, on a poster, you know, at the school gate and everything. She topped there. She got 103 uh, subjects. So it's a very close example. So it shouldn't. It wasn't taken for granted for sure. She gave in a lot of effort for it. But uh, I told that when I went and visited, and I told her, when I ka Adya, apne ye number lai ho. That is not why you're valued, right? You're valued for the effort that you had put in. Before uh, the exam, she used to call me and ask me if some advice over some like physics and chemistry, which I'm good at. Uh, but uh, so I used to tell her just before her exams, I said, are, they, are, are you happy with the preparation? She said, yes. I was like, that's all that matters. It doesn't matter what marks you get, right? So it wasn't taken for granted. We were all very happy. So do not celebrate the child for the best that they get. Celebrate them for who they are, for the effort that they put in, and celebrate them because they are good kids, right? Like, uh, we do not teach her that Sam Dam Dan Bhed. That is not the kind of teaching. I've seen that in a lot of my cousins, like my uncles and aunts, that I've seen it. Marks are gaina or kya chahiye. I'm like, no, that's not what matters. Marks do not matter. Your values matter. How you get there is what matters. Let them fail, right? Like it's all right if they fail. They should still be able to come back home because they're celebrated or not because of their achievements, because who they are, right? That is the biggest thing that uh, happens. Uh, that is why kids go into this depression and they commit suicide and because they are told Right? So how do you find that balance, right? Ki, like how does the uh, children feel comfortable at now? She is preparing for ITJ. And I told her, I'm like, are they prepared for ITJ because it's tough, right? You'll get disciplined. Uh, if you, uh, you know, it will make you work harder. If you work hard at a younger age, you'll be ready to work hard at a later age. But even if you don't get to IIT, doesn't mean that you can't be successful. The biggest problem that parents do is they attach uh, their happiness, their child's happiness and achievement and everything with just one benchmark. The exam clear karlo, itne number layao, ye wala sport jeet lo. Right, even if your child comes last in a race and they ran, ran with all their might, you know, pat them in the back. That's all I'll say. I'm not a parent. <laughs> I've only had experience of my niece and my nephew, but that's all I can say. Awesome, thank you. With that, Any other questions? If one is content with what they have, then happiness is sure to follow. Actually, yes, absolutely. Like, I'm, I'm personally, I can only talk about my personal experiences. Uh, I might come out as a narcissist when I say that, but 
a part of me i am still so when i sold my uh, first startup the first thing i did was pay off my education loan the, i still have uh, had enough money and i am a car freak i was really looking for a nice car to buy a used one enthusiast car but i decided not to i'm still driving the car that i had bought in 2010 right uh and uh, i'm one of those guys who is the most content and at the same time extremely discontent with my success so it is something like just because you're content i think your effort should not stop but that doesn't mean that uh, you don't feel contented it's it should not be like that i should stop working right i always say this uh, if you can't learn to be happy in a maruti swift you will not be happy in a mercedes you know so that that's what so i think uh, never uh, question ji uh, get in <laughs> even is contented with what they have uh, then happiness show to fall absolutely be just content with what you have like contentment doesn't mean that you are not ambitious i think people see content and ambition as to as opposite to each other i don't think so uh, they are kind of not antonyms to each other for sure you can be content and ambitious at the same time absolutely absolutely a lot of people equate uh, being complacent with not having ambition right i mean uh, being satisfied as being complacent which yes, is uh, exactly. that is a that's not really the absolutely i think it's absolutely fine not to be ambitious it's absolutely fine i think you know we are in this world of too much of data and everything the point is that we live in a world in india and this economy you can have a very content life you can work less number of hours uh, have small things and be very content not be very ambitious and i think it's absolutely fine i sometimes feel jealous of people who are not ambitious you know who are very content with what they have they are not chasing the next thing right i my uncle but like they are but they are acting so they have to act exactly. in whatever way they have to exactly but, uh, you're you're right they are not consumed by that desire yes. to uh yes. yeah they're for the next things. for the next milestone yes they are not chasing things they are not yes. ambitions that you know rentless ambition ki bas ye karna hai aur ye karna hai aur ye karna hai yes yes yeah. still karo thoda life mein so it's okay not to be ambitious yeah, yeah. Over ambitious let's say, let's put it over ambitious right yes yes yes, yes. not to be over ambitious anybody else any questions so uh So thank you so much Dharya for uh, sharing thanks everyone for joining in sharing the book review with this us this is a wonderful community if people still have not filled any the form and i i would ask everyone here to invite their friends to this wonderful community the sessions they have every yes, week yes. Uh, are simply amazing and uh, if you haven't uh, read the book this is also a good time to Uh, buy the book and read it now that we know what it is about and it's it's quite an uh, absorbing read uh, i uh, read this in this last week because i had to host this session i said i must read the book and it's quite interesting it gives different perspectives of wealth happiness uh, yes thank you so much dhairya thank you dhairya and thank you to each uh, and every everybody. one of you for being here with us and uh, we hope to see you again next saturday with another session of mindful living thank, thank you, you all thank you all thanks a lot bye Thanks.